Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. And so with that, I will pass it over to our panelists for uh, Do You Find an Introduction. So Hello, I'm Damian Katz. Uh, I'm the Director of Library Technology at Falvey Memorial Library at Villanova University. Uh, and I've been the lead developer and community manager of the Viewfind project since 2009, which is quite a while. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about what Viewfind is and where it came from. Uh, and then I'm going to turn over the floor to uh, a couple of uh, experienced Viewfind users who will talk a little bit about their Viewfind experiences to set a little bit more context. Uh, and I hope I won't bore you if you're already a little bit familiar with Viewfind, um, but these slides have been illustrated with images from uh, different Viewfind instances from all over the world. So even if what I'm talking about sounds familiar, uh, I hope that you will enjoy looking at the gallery of Viewfinds as we go. So uh, in my presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about Viewfind uh, first by uh, explaining its history and evolution, then summarizing its key features, uh, talking about the design and philosophy behind it, uh, talking about the community, which is of course really important uh, in an open source project, uh, say a little bit about what's coming in the future, and finally point you to where you can learn more about the project and the software. So let's start with history. Uh, Viewfind started as an open source project in 2007, a time when many uh, library systems had really ugly and unfriendly uh, web-based user interfaces while users were accustomed to Google. So the early versions of Viewfind were really meant to close this gap uh, by providing Google-like searching of MARC records uh, and also offering integration with basic uh, integrated library system features like real-time record availability, placing holds, renewing books, and so forth. Of course, uh, over time, the project grew and evolved, and we wanted to do more than just use MARC records. Uh, so we added support for indexing other kinds of things. Uh, this essentially opened up the ability to search any set of records that you might happen to have in your institution, whether it's an institutional repository, a journal, or anything else that supports the OAI PMH protocol for extracting metadata or you know, any other uh, method that could make its way into ViewFind's index. Uh, we also added tools for crawling local websites uh, so that you could include web results along with bibliographic records. Uh, continuing to expand, of course, we had to acknowledge that there are things that users might want to search that exist beyond the control of the local library. Uh, it's great to index all the things that we can locally, but there are also other things out there. And so the project evolved again uh, to add optional support uh, for communicating with third party APIs to pull in even more results. Uh, this enabled a lot of additional integrations with things like WorldCat and WebScale discovery services, and also led us to develop uh, a flexible system for building bento box searches, where a single search brings back a variety of types of search results in different boxes, uh, allowing the user to navigate through uh, different types of result sets. And that brings us to today. Uh, because it has evolved so much over the years, it's sometimes a little bit hard to say what Viewfind is because it can be used in so many different ways. It's not just a replacement for your library catalog, but it could be. Um, it's not necessarily just for uh, accessing content from things you subscribe to, but it could be. Uh, the point is, it's an open source tool that lets you build search interfaces and provide more convenient access uh, to your library's functionality uh, in a consistent and user-friendly and customizable way. So that brings us on to diving deeper into the key features. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the technologies behind Viewfind. Uh, it is primarily a modern object-oriented PHP application 
Uh, it's built using a lot of existing PHP components uh, with the Laminas framework sort of holding it all together. Uh, and if you haven't been keeping up, Laminas is what used to be called Zend framework until a fairly recent rebranding. Uh, it can persist its data in a number of different uh, databases. It supports all the popular open source options of MySQL, MariaDB, or Postgres. Uh, and it uses Solar for local indexing, though if you're only interested in searching through third-party APIs, you don't have to use the Solar part. Uh, so let's say a little bit more about uh, the flexibility of ViewFind's indexing. Uh, ViewFind creates sort of an abstract model of search. So it provides uh, a schema for indexing bibliographic records, as well as tools that map all kinds of things to that schema, be it MARC records or Dublin Core or some other commonly used formats. Uh, but it's all very flexible. So you can change the schema, you can change the indexing rules, you can change the way the data is displayed to the end user. Uh, and this gives you a lot of flexibility while also giving you something that's quite useful and powerful right out of the box. Uh, I also, of course, mentioned ILS integration. While ViewFind does not have to be used with an ILS, you could use it, for example, to build standalone bibliographies or to just search uh, non-ILS resources. If you do use an ILS, ViewFind integrates very nicely with it. Uh, including drivers for more than 15 commonly used systems, including Folio and all the uh, popular open source options, like Koha and Evergreen. Uh, and so this is what enables users to access their account information through ViewFind, uh, regardless of what system you're actually running in the background. Uh, I talked about third party integrations. And as I said, ViewFind includes quite a few of those as well, uh, WorldCat, EBSCO Discovery, Summon, uh, and a number of other uh, smaller systems. And ViewFind is designed in such a way that you can build your own integrations uh, if you need to. Everything is modular, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. ViewFind also integrates well with a lot of different authentication systems. So if you want to, you can use it with your institution's login, whether that be LDAP or Shibboleth or something else or ViewFind can completely manage uh, accounts internally using its own database, or it can proxy the login of your ILS. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility here depending on your needs. Uh, ViewFind is used all over the world. We have instances on every continent except Antarctica, as far as I know. So feel free to set it up in a research base if you like to, to complete our set. Uh, but anyway, in order to support this international use, uh, we have a strong internationalization system uh, with more than 30 translations of the interface included and support for both left to right and right to left languages. Uh, ViewFind features modern design. Uh, its design is responsive so that it works well on a variety of screen sizes, including mobile devices. Uh, and there's a focus on accessibility compliance uh, so that people with disabilities can use the software uh, just as well as everyone else. Uh, ViewFind includes some social features. Uh, users can create lists of favorite records and share those with others. Uh, they can also leave tags and comments on records. And if you don't like these things, you can also turn them all off. Uh, ViewFind supports third-party content integration as well as third-party search integration. So you can pull in additional details about your records by using common identifiers. Uh, and this is used for things like displaying cover images, linking to full book previews, uh, pulling in reviews and excerpts, and so forth. Uh, and a number of services are supported for these things. Uh, ViewFind has some built-in citation tools. Uh, you can display on-screen citations that are generated by ViewFind itself, or you can export data about individual records to bibliography management software like EndNote or Zotero. Uh, ViewFind has built-in support uh, that's useful for consortia. Uh, so if you're using a single ViewFind instance to manage records from a number of libraries, uh, you have some power to uh, really make the most of that data. 
Uh, we have a special ILS connector that can proxy multiple ILSs and route based on record IDs. So you can pull real-time information and offer account access to multiple systems from a single ViewFind instance. Uh, ViewFind is also designed to be multi-tenant, so you can install it once but set up multiple uh, web views into it with completely separate themes and configurations. So if you want to manage a single instance of the software but provide different interfaces for a number of institutions, uh, that is possible right out of the box. Uh, next, let's move on to talk about uh, the design philosophy behind ViewFind. Uh, first of all, the software architecture is a fairly traditional model view controller setup uh, where the display logic lives in themes and templates, uh, and those can be managed independently of the business logic, which is all in PHP classes. Uh, so this helps with both the development and the customization of the software. Uh, and I realize that MVC is hardly a groundbreaking technology at this point in time, uh, but it works well and it's easy to set up and manage uh, and it serves us well. Uh, another important uh, philosophy behind ViewFind is configuration first. Uh, we try to make it possible to do a great deal with the software without touching any code. So there are many configuration files that control basically every aspect of what the software does. And of course, these are all configured with what we feel to be reasonable defaults. So you get something that works really nicely out of the box, but there are a lot of things that you can change and adjust as needed uh, to get what you want out of the software. Uh, ViewFind is also designed to be highly extensible. So if the configuration alone doesn't get you what you want, uh, it's very possible to either override or extend uh, really any part of the system. Everything in ViewFind is designed as a plugin, uh, which you can replace or extend as you go. Uh, so if you're comfortable with PHP, it's fairly painless uh, to add new features to the system or change behaviors. Uh, and you can do all of this in locally built code without having to modify the core code uh, which makes upgrades a little bit less painful and uh, also makes it easier to express uh, what you have customized in code uh, separately from everything you get from upstream. Uh, so now let's talk about ViewFind's community. Uh, historically, uh, ViewFind has been led and coordinated uh, through Villanova University's Falvey Memorial Library, wh where I work, uh, but as I mentioned, it's used worldwide and many of its users are also uh, strong contributors to the project. Uh, so it's been an international collaboration almost from the beginning and it continues to be very active today. Uh, historically, ViewFind's community has been quite informal, uh, but since we want to be a little bit more organized as we make our way into the Open Library Foundation, uh, we spent some time and created a formal meritocratic governance model uh, this year. So there's now an official project management committee. I'm the community manager uh, and we can continue to do what we've always done, but with a little bit more formality to it. Uh, in terms of how the community works online, uh, we have a few different communication mechanisms that we use. Uh, we use mailing lists and Slack and JIRA for support and ticketing, and of course, GitHub for managing all of our code. Uh, and our philosophy is that all are welcome. Uh, it's a very friendly community, and we try very hard to answer newcomer questions as quickly as possible. Uh, I pride myself on a fast turnaround to all inquiries. So please, uh, if you have any questions that don't get answered during this session, and we will have time for questions at the end, uh, you can always come and talk to us later uh, through our online channels. So I've talked about what ViewFind is and where it came from. So let's talk about where we're going. So ViewFind is actually at this point quite a mature piece of software, uh, but things never stop moving, of course. So there's always updating to do to deal with new versions of the PHP language and changes in our dependencies. And there are also always new features and new integrations to add. 
Um, but for today, I just wanted to focus on a couple of larger scale projects that will likely have impact on viewfind in the near term. Uh, one is an increased use of static analysis tools. Uh, as the PHP language has grown, uh, it's become a lot more, at least potentially formal uh, with strong typing and some other features that allow the creation of cleaner, more maintainable, more reliable code. Uh, and as that has happened, tools have also come along to analyze existing PHP code and either automatically improve it or make suggestions of areas where improvement can be made. And since Viewfind has a code base that's been developing for over a decade, uh, we definitely can do more uh, to make use of these new language features and continue to grow. I'm quite proud of the quality of Viewfind's code already, uh, but I look forward to uh, making it even better uh, with the help of tools like PHP Stan and Psalm, uh, which are a couple of uh, widely used static analysis tools. That's not very glamorous though, especially if you're not a developer. So let's also talk about the fact that we are working on a new theme for Viewfind. Uh, as I mentioned, Viewfind's theme is already uh, modern in terms of being responsive and accessible, but it also hasn't had a refresh in a few years and we're excited uh, to uh, come up with another generation of uh, Viewfind's look and feel. Uh, our current theme is built on Bootstrap 3, which is not the latest version of Bootstrap. Um, so we're looking for a new theme that's more framework agnostic so that you can use something like Bootstrap if you want to, but you're not necessarily locked into it. Uh, we're looking to refactor some of our templates to make customization even easier. Uh, right now, customization is generally as simple as create a local theme, copy a core template into your local theme, and then customize that template. But by making things in smaller pieces and offering tools for injecting content, uh, we can reduce the amount of copying and pasting that you need to do to customize things, which will again, just make future maintenance that much less painful. Uh, we want to just modernize the look and user experience. As I say, it's been a couple of years and trends and fashions are always changing. Uh, and we want to update the tools that we use for managing the theme uh, just to get up to date with best practices. Again, we've been using uh, the same a uh, less based uh, style sheet compilation routine for quite a while. Uh, there may be some better ways of doing things. So that is something to watch that will be evolving uh, in the coming months. And that's really it for my basic introduction. But if you want to learn more, there are a lot of resources out there. You can go to viewfind.org to learn a whole lot more about the software and find all of our documentation. Uh, in particular, if you look at the wiki at viewfind.org, you'll find a lot about how to install the software, how to solve common problems, and so forth. Uh, you can find us on GitHub if you want to see our code. That's also linked directly from viewfind.org if you don't want to have to type in that long URL. Uh, and finally, uh, for the last couple of years, we've been recording monthly video tutorials about all kinds of aspects of viewfind. Uh, and at this point, we have enough that if you watch them, it's essentially a, a crash course in installing, setting up, and using Viewfind. So by all means, check those out uh, if you want to really dive in. Uh, I also want to thank everyone who uh, responded to my call for Viewfind instances to screenshot for this presentation. Uh, there were so many uh, that I was not able to fit all of them in. So here are some more random pictures of viewfind instances. Uh, and here is a gigantic slide of URLs uh, for all of the featured instances, as well as a link to a wiki page that includes more than 100 more. Uh, there are a lot of viewfinds out there. Uh, and as you've seen, because of the ability to customize the software, there is a lot of variety in their look and feel. So with all of that, uh, I'm going to conclude my presentation. Uh, as I say, I'll, I'll answer questions at the end along with the other two panelists here. Uh, and I will turn this over to Hayo Sang to talk about his viewfind experiences. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. 
So um, I'm just trying to share my screen as well. And it looks like it works. So um, I'm just, um, Okay, so I, um, <clears throat> my name is Haya Seng. I'm working at the um, Hamburg University Library and I'm working with um, you know, find based um, library catalogs. And I just want to um, tell a little bit about um, our community of um, adapting and customizing you find catalogs um, for the needs of um, our libraries um, respectively. So um, catalogs for <clears throat> at least uh, most of the libraries I, I know about, um, they regard their catalogs as some kind of um, showcases for the institutions. So they want to have um, the, the catalogs ad adapted to their, um, um, yeah, to their services, to the way they want to present themselves um, to um, the users. And um, I think the adaptability of um, of uh, catalog is a uh, very good um, non-idealistic reason for libraries to use um, open source software because that's one of the aspects where um, just uh, um, you find, for example, um, um, is very different to to um, those commercial kind of OPEX um, which are around um, now. So. Um, it works. Um, or, um, it's a it's a good um, reason for libraries as long as um, they have um, enough IT um, resources available in order to maintain these catalogs, and that's some. Um, at least in Germany, it's it's a crucial point because libraries regularly don't have a lot of IT resources, and um, so we have to um, deal with um, um, quite. Um, um, a few resources um, um, in, and get um, those catalogs um, adapted in the way um, we want to have it. So um, <clears throat> examples for adaptions are, um, to those special needs are, um, for example, um, libraries which um, have um, special delivery or reserve services and want to show them within the catalogs or even one of our libraries um, wanted to integrate a tool for performing um, um, molecule structure searches um, through, um, within the catalogs. Or uh, you want to have some fancy colored availability informations um, um, seen, or you want to have um, integrated some expansion of um, search spaces beyond the scope of um, the library, or you want to serve um, several library with one um, um, interface in a portal, portal like um, um, catalog. And so you have um, um, just um, a, a, quite a lot of um, special needs, for example, individually ad adjusted avail availability adapters. That's one of the issues we have here in um, Germany, for example, or um, some um, you have to want to handle um, specific bibliographic metadata or you have some special usability requirements um, you want to serve. And um, these needs, they, they um, lead to um, <clears throat> yeah, some real extension of functionalities. For example, you can connect some special services to your catalog or your um, other example is um, that you want to have um, integrate some um, search key abbreviations um, in order to have some shortcuts for special searches. And um, and you have as well some very particular requirements as some special facet as adjustments for example adjustments for example or um, some adaptions to internal organizations internal loan um, issues and and so on. And um, above all, you want to extend, uh, change knowledge, and um, that's quite an important aspect as well for um, within our library networks to, to have an exchange of knowledge um, about um, bibliographic um, um, issues like metadata, metadata conversations, for example, or um, to um, link resolving issues, or you 
want to have um, gather knowledge or make some kind of researches on the topic of relevance um, um, ranking and well, um, doing ranking analysis, uh, or you want to um, do some researches on usability issues, for example, to, to um, learn about um, search strategies um, people use um, um, with their catalog and you want to support um, <clears throat> the users in um, using the, the ways of searching within this catalogs. So we are in fact um, not only um, just uh, some network, some flat network, we are, it's more like um, layers of networks we are um, um, dealing with. So it's um, um, of course you find uh, some base layer as a really huge um, open source community and on the other hand we have the um, GBH which is a network of German university libraries in northern and middle part of Germany and we have um, Beluga Core as a de development community of um, now seven library systems in northern Germany and um, we have a network of scientific libraries in Hamburg it's about 20 of them and not at last um, our library, the Hamburg University Library is a system consisting of about 70 different libraries, which are some kind of um, um, independent or independent working institutions as well. And so, so it's a very complex network we are working in and uh, trying to um, um, adjust, even, adjust our catalogs to our specific needs and um, share, um, share, share the development of viewfind extensions due to our um, um, poor IT resources in each of our um, libraries. And we want to share features and knowledge with other libraries and um, of course with um, viewfind community as well. So um, the way we are trying to um, achieve our aim is um, that we um, um, use a very strict modular structure for our extensions so that they are more or less pluggable on um, viewfind um, instances and so and we um, just um, handle it um, in the way that we say for, for each um, special feature we have uh, one module so, so all those all, all modules are not um, um, too um, big and they can um, be um, uh, yeah, used and um, adapted um, individually. Um, we want to support communities as far as we are able to, um, of course, but um, not only um, the libraries within our networks, but um, as well other libraries um, which can um, get into contact to us and want to um, share some knowledge with us and um, and we want other libraries to benefit from our knowledge and um, um, we, um, we are doing it or we're trying to do it by supporting research, for example, on search engine technologies or on usability issues. And um, we um, are participating as well um, in discussions, mainly in um, metadata optimization discussions. So that's um, uh, um, it's quite a small um, um, view um, on our network and the way we are um, using um, UFind um, as a basis for our um, library catalogs. So I can um, give it to Iwi now. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Adam Ayala. Uh, I'm the lead developer of Finna, which is a uh, a uh, fairly large Finnish installation of uh, WooFind. And I'm going to share my screen with a couple of slides to illustrate the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is uh, what I would like to call a success story with WooFind since uh, we have been doing this uh, a long time. And uh, before we ended up with WooFind, it was a convoluted process. Uh, anyway, Finna is uh, a consortium of uh, Finnish libraries, archives, and museums. And that's one of the key things uh, that we started with. We wanted to integrate all these uh, uh, 
memory organizations and uh, and bring them together, bring the content to the people. The project is uh, funded by the Ministry of Education and Culture, for the most part. Uh, there are some that uh, come from outside of its funding, but that's a small minority. And the local development work is uh, coordinated by the National Library of Finland. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we've been doing this since 2012, I think. So the idea is uh, that we have a shared pool fund installation. And like uh, Damian mentioned, it's possible to have one installation with uh, whole different views or what, what we call views to it. And, uh, and that's what we are employing extensively. So the whole thing, uh, of course, has numerous components, but the main components we have are WooFind uh, and Record Manager, which is something that we've developed to handle all the data harvesting and uh, the data application, migrations, uh, normalization, indexing into solar to the solar index and so on and uh, this has been one of the key things uh, since we manage quite a lot of data sources and uh, we have tried to keep the number of uh, different ways that we ingest data to a minimum and uh, record manager is the is the one thing that uh, we use to harvest uh, primarily oaip image sources but there are a couple of uh, exceptions. Then we have an administration interface, but we are trying to open up, but it has been built for our own needs and uh, it's been an ongoing process to make it more generalized so that it could be used for other institutions as well. Uh, we have some local specialties like uh, Finna Street Search, which allows you to, especially when you're using a mobile device, uh, go to a place, ask for street shirts, get images, historical images, or contemporary images, but whatever there happens to be about this location you are at. So we are doing geographic indexing and, uh, and searching in this way. We also have some uh, uh, done some extensive work to make the search work better for the Finnish language. Uh, while maintaining support for English and uh, Swedish and, and and others, but the Finnish language is a bit, little bit different, and uh, we need to handle compound words and things like that, and that's been uh, been a lot of work. But I think that the, what we've achieved has been used in quite a few organizations outside of our installation as well. Uh, as numbers. We have 86 institutions with productions view, with production views, and I think that this may be an outdated figure since it was from last week. So we have, may have a couple more now. Uh, the production index has uh, 84 million records. This includes uh, some DDAP records that merge together all the records from uh, from from the various institutions, so mostly libraries, uh, since we consider like um, the records that come from museums uh, as uh, unique, they are normal, not be duplicated. We have now more than 300 data sources. And this means that uh, we have had to do a lot of work to automate the, the indexing and, uh, and updating, updating of, of records. And we support uh, at the moment, uh, seven metadata formats which are listed here. And uh, while Mark is a typical thing for libraries, Muslims mainly use Lido and archives use the different EAD formats. And then uh, some archives uh, and, uh, well, there are quite a few places that still use the qualified Dublin core. And the forward format is a specialty of uh, the National uh, Audiovisual Institute. We also incorporate some learning metadata uh, and, uh, and we have some local development uh, around that. We support uh, 85 uh, different library systems. Of course, there are only a couple of different library vendors or the system vendors. So these are the 
drivers that we use. But like Damien mentioned, there is this uh, uh, special driver that allows you to uh, proxy through to the library system in question. So we use that quite extensively. And then also there are two external indexes in use for, for the licensed electronic material, XLibrix CDI and EBSCO EDS. Uh, for development, about the development, we have a fairly large team of, uh, of people working with different aspects of Finna. Uh, and while it may seem that, uh, that this uh, some huge resources, it of course, of course, we have some other responsibilities in the National Library as well. So it's not like there are 28 people working full time with, with, with Finna. There is uh, a lot of different things, but it's uh, it's uh, since there are so many so many organizations involved, and so many people, uh, and so many different aspects between, uh, we need to employ, for instance, user uh, experience designers and uh, and service designers, and and there is a lot of support work as well. Of course, we try to always try to work work on that so that uh, we get less support. Uh, support questions, but uh, somehow it doesn't always work like that. Uh, and then we have some more than almost 7000 local commits on top of WooFind. Now I'm not sure if this includes merge commits, so it would bring it down a little bit, but uh, it's still a fairly huge number. Uh, fortunately, we've been able to go back to the roots so sometimes there have been some features that have uh, diverged from WooFind quite a lot, but then we've come back when we realized that uh, our own ideas are not, not always better than the original ones. Uh, we work on contributing our local developments back to the community. So whenever there is something that uh, we think might be of use for others as well. Uh, we try to contribute back. Mm. We still have a lot of work to do, and uh, it's always like an ongoing process. But uh, uh, I think it's worth it because uh, because the more we do it, uh, well, of course it benefits others, but we also get more more eyes seeing the code, seeing the functionality, getting more feedback from others using it and also getting new ideas on how to improve. Uh, I gathered a couple of images from different uh, Finna instances to show how different these are and, uh, and try to get them small, but uh, they're all like, like I said, almost a hundred different uh, views uh, actually. I think I said that there is uh, like 86 institutions with production views and that's uh, uh, there are actually more views because some institutions have uh, have some special ones. So there could be like a topic specific uh, view and there are, there are like regional views for libraries in some, some geographical area, for example. So it's not just that. But the, we have our own theme, which is based on the bootstrap theme of WooFind, but it has diverged quite a lot. And uh, we've tried to make it so that uh, some, uh, like uh, the most typical customizations are easy to make. And uh, these uh, include the main search box area, background images, all the colors and sort of theme colors that are available. And uh, there are some areas where we allow uh, the organizations to add some information texts or like uh, instructions for the users without hacking, hacking the original templates. And, uh, and I'm really happy that we have so many different, uh, different kinds of uh, organizations in Finna. We also provide an API so that uh, the organizations can uh, can build some services on top of that, but it's only only for the search functionality. So it's a 
it's the sort of an access to the solar index and uh, the search functionality of uh, of finna.fi via the api but there are a couple of services that have been built on top of that that have been quite successful so here is a uh, very small gallery of different views and seeing how different they look here of course they all have the same uh, underlying functionality for most parts so people moving from uh, from uh, one view view to another are familiar with how it works and we try to keep it that way because uh, there are a lot of users that uh, have uh, like uh, our patrons in say a university library and the public library and museums and uh, archives maybe as well so having the the one interface that uh, works for all of them uh, even though it may be branded a little bit differently is is very nice and of course we also eat our do own dog food and uh, and uh, i'm i'm a patron of the library as well so i try try to make make it as good as possible thank you so that was a small interaction to what finna is and uh, and uh, and uh, an attempt to show you that the uh, Wufan is really suitable for quite diverse needs and uh, and uh, and big institutions and big indexes. Thanks. Well, thank you, everyone. So I think we've reached our question and answer time. And I see there is just one question in the Q&A panel so far. But please uh, all feel free to add some more. But I will start by answering the one that's there already, uh, which is, uh, with the introduction of static analysis tools, uh, will contribution guidelines require meeting benchmarks from these tools? Uh, and the answer to that is that right now, ViewFind's contribution process is really built around GitHub pull requests. So um, we have a continuous integration process built on GitHub that runs all of the code quality checks. Uh, so as we introduce new things like higher levels of static analysis uh, compliance, uh, that will just get built into the contribution process and people who contribute code will get automatic feedback uh, on their compliance and potentially tools that will just fix problems for them. Uh, so that's a long way of saying yes. <laughs> uh, next question is, uh, how many developers work on ViewFind at Finland's National Library? And I, I think I saw the number of 28 people, but I don't know how many of those are developers. Yes, and that's a good question. Uh, and the first uh problem I have with answering that is uh, how to define a developer. We have, for instance, a user experience designer who also does some UI work. And, uh, and uh, I'm having a bit of a trouble, trouble with uh, categorizing people properly. But I, I think that uh, for the most, most actively uh, committing people are like four or five at the moment uh, that has been changing a little bit because people are like uh, sometimes doing a little bit different uh, different work and uh, uh, concentrating on certain things and and there are also also some aspects uh, with uh, within particular pinna.fi which is the kind of a shared view to all the freely available material and we have like uh, this uh, educational packages there and uh, like the uh, organizations have been contributing sort of uh, uh, learning packages of, uh, of their own own data and we have been working on those uh, to bring them to the users so that uh, they're like for different uh, kinds of uh, pupils there are ways to learn more about the materials available and there are quest questions for for learning more and uh, and the sort of uh, uh, working on the on, on the results, so that's uh, for students and uh, and things like that. And those are things that are not visible in the code itself. So there's a lot of development work that doesn't uh, 
uh, mirror in, in GitHub. So that's why it's it's difficult to say say how many would you would say would be the developers. But yeah, committers maybe five, but uh, then like three, four more that work on on at least the user interface code, like the theme at the theme level and and uh, especially in the content level. I hope this sort of <laughs> answers the question, even if I'm unable to answer it properly. Thank you. Uh, next question is, what is the time frame for the updates to the viewfind theme? And I think this is a, a good excuse to talk a little bit about viewfinds release cadence, uh, which is that every year we have one major release that potentially introduces uh, backward breaking changes of some sort, just in the name of ongoing progress. Uh, and then usually around six months after that, we have a feature release that adds more functionality onto that without breaking anything more. Um, we've been trying to get our new theme out for quite a while. It's, I think, our most delayed project uh, just because we really want to get it right. And there have been a lot of things going on. Uh, so at this point, the next major viewfind release is 8.0. And if we don't get the new theme in 8.0, we are at least going to get a lot of uh, refactoring and support tools that are going to make the implementation of that theme a lot easier while also improving the quality of the themes that are already there. Uh, so then I expect that a whole brand new theme will either be part of 8.1 or 9.0, depending on how we manage to get all of our timelines uh, in order. Uh, and of course, if, if you're uh, in need of this and want to participate in the community, if we get more people on the project, uh, we can probably get there a little faster. But there's been a lot of planning work going. So I think that when it comes to implementation, that part is going to be small compared to all the work that has led up to it. Uh, the next question is, with no local programming folks, do you all serve some academic libraries who use Viewfind, or does it require at least one programmer helping locally? Uh, and I'd say the answer to that is, you don't necessarily have to have a local programmer, uh, but you'll need some form of support. And there are a few different paths I've seen. Uh, first of all, there are some commercial support uh, companies that offer Viewfind development work. So you could potentially get somebody else to host Viewfind for you or help you with your Viewfind work uh, if you need that. Uh, another path I've seen is that uh, a number of people who have contributed a lot to the Viewfind project started off as not programming people, uh, but they worked with the project and learned their way up and became developers through working with it. Uh, that, is not an unattainable path if you're so inclined and sufficiently brave. Uh, and there is a lot of community support to help. Um, certainly, it doesn't hurt to try out the experience of installing it and see how it feels for you, and then talk to the community about what it would take uh, to get to where you need it to be. Uh, next question, has the National Library of Finland had any scalability challenges with such a large implementation? I'd like to say no, but the, the truth is yes, we have had some issues and uh, I think we can uh, put those into different categories. First of all is, uh, is the search performance with solar and, uh, and things like that. And uh, there, are, there have been a couple of hurdles that uh, we've had to work on. And one of these that uh, uh, from the get go, we have uh, had the target of having a system that's uh, available 24 seven. And we ended up uh, implementing solar cloud uh, so that we have a, a resilient uh, scalable solar index. And it's been working really well. But when we, when our index was growing, and uh, we found that we we need to start start sharding sharding it uh, well it was easy to is to do and everything worked well except for some some cases where 
for example, we were used to be a, being able to jump to the last results page of, of uh, a result set of million records with a sharded index that's a risk before disaster. It just ruins performance uh, if it doesn't bring the whole cluster down because you run out of memory. Uh, so we've been uh, we, we've had to learn these things and uh, and have to add some uh, limitations on on what we can do. Uh, but we've been able to work work through that quite well. Another one is that uh, with all this amount of data, something like deduplication and uh, and reindexing the index takes some time, and uh, there's been a lot of work uh, on optimizing those. And uh, while, while the software is written uh, in PHP, it's performing quite well these days. And we've had some like multi-process support for, for leveraging the CPUs available and so on. And our solar index is now five virtual machine, machines with uh, five shards. So it's growing. It's, uh, the technology is uh, moving on. We used to have some physical servers but we move to the virtual servers to be able to scale better. Uh, but then there is another kind of group of uh, issues that come from uh, having to access all these external APIs and external services that we integrate. And when there are a lot of users uh, and a lot of external uh, requests, we sort of uh, get bottlenecked by, by some remote APIs not, not answering in a timely manner. Since our servers are limited in uh, how many re the concurrent requests they can handle, uh, we may end up with a situation that uh, the whole system is waiting for a certain vendor to have their API properly running again. So some kind of uh, compartmentalization helps in that aspect, having sensible timeouts for external requests while not, not hampering the service are essential. And, uh, and uh, we've also had to have to think about uh, all these different aspects of how to reduce uh, concurrent uh, requests and, uh, for instance, blacklist services that are not responding properly. I can also answer the next question about the information sharing between UF and Solar Index and uh, Xlibricidia and Exco EDS. Uh, not really. There is no information sharing between those those indexes, but we have been working on uh, sort of a blended search that uh, would bring all the results under under one one result list, and that's uh, already working quite well. But it's still being tested by the libraries, and we we have had a couple of issues with that. Um, blending the results, uh, especially with relevance, is uh, not an easy task, uh, and uh, well, we are somewhat cheating on the process, but the, I think uh, more important than uh, having perfect uh, relevance is that we can bring all the facets, facets uh, together. So we have done a lot of mapping work to, to sort of uh, integrate the external facets with uh, what we have in solar to make it uh, as seamless as possible. So to that extent, uh, yeah, we can we can make this uh, sort of share, but uh, but uh, our own index is uh, for our own stuff or the stuff that the organizations have. So we have not yet uh, yet indexed uh, any licensed material or uh, electronic uh, journals material so much. There is some licensed material that's not uh, freely available for everyone, but mostly. That's, uh, that's the thing. So the next question is, could we use these tools in any library, for example, in our library in Venezuela? And uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, Viewfind is free and open source. So anyone is able to use it anywhere uh, free of cost and can reach out to the community for support uh, if you need help or have further questions. That's the, the beauty of all of these OLF projects. Uh, so by all means, please reach out if you want to talk about this further uh, following the conference.
And then I think we have one last question about integration with external indexes. Uh, is Finna calling the external search engines through an API or moving data to ViewFind's internal index? And I guess maybe this is a general ViewFind question and not specifically about Finna. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll offer the general answer and then uh, Eric can, can clarify for Finna um, that ViewFind includes uh, integrations with these APIs that are just doing real-time lookups of the third-party APIs without pulling any data into ViewFind's internal index. Uh, and then if we want to provide internal and external results side by side, that's where the uh, bento box uh, multi-column search uh, fits in. And I I'm hoping eventually we'll, we'll get to incorporate the work we just heard about with blended search as, as another option as well. I think I have not, I don't have much to add to that and, uh, and uh, yeah, we have to work on the uh, work with those APIs. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Uh, there are some differences in how the APIs work and uh, uh, making all the different search, sort, search options available is sometimes a lot of work. And there are, then there are ex exceptions on, in what, how the things work. So that's something we've had to work on a lot. But anyway, that's how it works. and. Uh, it works relatively well. Of course, it would be nice to have everything in a single index for the best possible relevance, but that would mean that we would have to have quite a bit more, more uh, capacity on our systems. And with that, I think we're down to the last question, which is a joke uh, asking, <laughs> what is the best way to organize a large collection of board games? I find they make an excellent Zoom backdrop, regardless of what order they're in. Uh, so <laughs> thank you everyone for all of the questions. Uh, and as I say, we, we love to welcome new people to ViewFind land. So don't hesitate to reach out in the future. Uh, if we can work with you, we'd love to. And there we are at time. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, that was a great presentation. And um, for the everyone, we'll see you back um, at the 10 or the 5 past the hour uh, for extensible open source integrations of OLF projects, Folio, Viewfind, GoKB, and Reshare all working together. So uh, looking forward to seeing you back in the room. Thank you again, panelists. It was great. Thank you. Thank you.